How are we going everyone? Just a quick one on pruning fruit trees. I know we've done it to death, but we haven't been in this little courtyard for a while, have we? These are our older trees that we've got. For those who haven't been following me for a while, we've got a few advanced trees here. Apples, so you can see how low this is. Now that's about 10 years old, this tree. I'm about six and a half foot tall, so that's about five and a half foot tall. <laughs> All right, for those who know me, I'm only five and a half foot tall, so this is only two foot tall. <laughs> That's pretty good, isn't it, actually, because it's got, it, it does produce a, an abundance of apples, even more so this one over here. Now, I haven't pruned this one back yet, and I should, actually, I should take all this stuff off at the top there and cut all this back again. You can see how low it is. If I was to take off these branches, which I, I'm actually contemplating the idea of taking them off, that's a coddling moth trap there, folks. So this is what you need in your trees uh, before the season starts. But we'll get onto that another time. It's not now for that. But I was going to think, I was actually thinking about bringing this right down here because all this here, this is all fruit bearing spurs here, everywhere. All this stuff there, see that there? That's a shoot that you don't want on your apple tree. And you cut it back to a couple of buds, facing on a facing outwards that is and on an angle and you get rid of that so that there we force it to become a fruit bearer all this here look at this all this is full of fruit now some of you who grow apples for a living will say you got no idea what you're doing here you've got way too many you thin them out you don't take off all the spurs you actually thin out the fruit if you want to i don't mind leaving it don't mind my little splint there that's cara's little trick of ripping my finger off while i was holding her on the lead so even i get attacked too well not attacked but taken for a ride so i just got to keep it straight there for a while now this tree here will bear lots of fruit on all this and if i don't thin it out it'll be let me use this hand <laughs> that big how's that about that size there so i don't mind the bite size it's really nice over here have a look at this this is a granny smith and i tell you i reckon i get about a thousand apples off this tree every year taking the guts out of the middle see that there the middle there that's gone you can see a huge opening in the middle there and again in summertime it starts to fill out and you can see we've got these new growths here got to take it right back to there don't worry we've got plenty of time to see more cuts here look, cut it right back to there this stuff up here cut it off get it down keep them short all this has to be cut short get them down so you can see all the it looks like the backside of a spider that's the way i imagine it so this is how i describe the the little furry buds that are actually fruit bearers so go around and thin your trees i've still got a bit of time on these ones because they're continuously bearing fruit for me i don't have to worry about too much growth on those this one here the plum tree you can see it's put on its summer growth after i pruned it now i'm going to go around and clean that up so i can bring it right back down and so it doesn't grow anymore and rather produces more fruit for me another one by the way, this is how I want my trees in the orchard to look like. We're talking about four metres wide, five metres wide, and only about two, two and a half metres tall. So imagine a couple of hundred trees like that in the orchard. You're not going to get the shade, but that's fine because I want the fruit. Come around here. And this is a little tree that I popped in the ground a while ago. And you know what? This is growing. This is starting to sprout already. Look at this. Now we've got the main tree there, uh, bugger me, huh? right next to the house. We've got, a suck we've got these suckers, I've got to cut these off. So these are all suckers that have got to be removed. Let me just cut that off like that, get it out of the way. All right, so you, you go around and check out your trees, because if you've got suckers coming out of the base, obviously the main tree itself is going to struggle. See this upright? Useless to me. Straight up, take it right off. When it grows straight up, folks, it's actually going to produce nothing but leaves. And annoying nothing else and a lot of shade so cut all these off and make sure you've got a clean pair of secateurs at the same time that just locked itself i've got to cut that down a bit lower but even that's good enough for now to stop it from growing anymore all these upper upper upright growths got to get rid of them you can't leave them on like that and that one there why is it growing already huh it's a nice warm spot it's already sprouting up the leaves way too early, way too early. So I've got to slow it down a bit, I reckon. Yeah, that's all new shoots already. Anybody else getting shoots on their trees, I'd be curious to find out out there because this is really taking off way too early for me. You can see we've got, look at that. This is new upright growth here too. That's the old wood, that's the new wood. And I don't want it to go up. So I'm just going to cut it randomly, you know, just anywhere like that for now, get rid of it. I don't need it. So I'm going to try and convert them into fruit bearers. But this, again, that's wrong. 
outside butt over here. Cut that off there. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I might just... Actually, I'm going to take it right back down to here for now. Get rid of that, get rid of that. And I don't want that growth up there. Yeah, yeah. We'll take that off there. Take it back to there. Take all these tips off. All right, I wasn't planning to cut it back, but when I've come out here and spotted all this happening, well, I'm going to have to slow it down, so... I don't want that growth here. Way too early. All it's going to do is go backwards if it starts to freeze over. And folks, for anybody out there who says to me, my trees haven't grown in the last couple of years since you've been watching me, <laughs> you know why? It's because I'm constantly pruning, because I like to keep them down low, you know? So this one only went in about six, nine months ago, somewhere around there. And again, I don't like it, so I'm, I'm taking that down. And that's what I do. Now, in a couple of years, two or three years, the orchard that you see this big all the time, right? In two or three years from today, actually one more year from today, year and a half today, it's going to be like that. Well, not as big as that, but it's going to have that shape going on there. And that's what's happened with these trees. Go back three years, they were half the size, a quarter of the size. It's called pruning and pruning to the right shape and size that you like. I don't want my trees to be giants and shadowing over the ground and all that. I want them to be low, open vase shape, because when they get too heavy and with the high winds, as, as you know, a lot of people had a bad experience this year with the winds, unforeseen circumstances with nature, and I really, our hearts go out to those folks out there with the trees falling down everywhere. I mean, this is as much damage as we got. Actually, no, we, we did lose a couple of trees, but look at that. That's split off there. So... All that sort of stuff's got to get cleaned up properly. And see, I didn't spray my secateurs because I just saw this happen. And I should have sprayed them, but never mind. I do keep my tools clean. And that's what you've got to do the same. So folks, get out there. Go out there and prune your trees. Don't be scared to prune your tree. If you prune it, you know, for example, a bit too much and it loses its shape, don't worry. What's the tree going to do? I mean, if you cut it to the ground, you're probably going to kill it. But, you know, if you prune the wrong branch at any time, it'll grow back. It may grow back twice as hard. And when it does, then you can choose the right branch to cut back next time. So practice gets you better at it. It doesn't make us all perfect, but it gets us better at it because every tree is different. Every environment is different. And you can't get it always right because look at this now. I've got ligustrums growing there, a hedge there. It's only a metre and a half there. I'm not getting any growth on this side. Why? Because the tree's not getting the heat radiating from there. As soon as the heat comes over the top, the sun that is, it starts to grow out on this side. And that's what's happening here. So, you know, you've got to shape your tree. So, for example, here, as I'm sitting here, I don't need it to get any closer to this tree. And I certainly don't want that one to grow anymore. So I'm going to take that back to there. And you work your way through it. Take all the tips off. Overlapping, dead, diseased, damaged wood. This looks like dead wood. You can see the discoloration. It's almost dead. You can see it's on, it, on its way out. White as a ghost. Go around, thin your trees out, clean them up, prune them properly, and we'll start getting into the fertilising. We've got another month to get there, folks, but in the meantime, enjoy your pruning, and it is end of year, end of financial year. That's how you say it, end of financial year. Eoffi? <laughs> I'm learning all these wonderful terms. Uh, sale on our website. Check it all out, vasilisgarden.com. Otherwise, get out in your garden and enjoy yourself. From me, Vasili, Maresi.